Are you ready to take your first steps towards financial freedom by investing in property? Maybe you've started your portfolio but need some help continuing to grow. Lachlan Vidler and the team at Atlas Property Group are here to help. As experts in property investment, Lachlan and his team are ready to help you take advantage of some of the best investing conditions in almost 20 years. By completing the research, sourcing and negotiations, Lachlan goes the extra mile to find you a high-performing investment and set you on your path to financial freedom. Book in your free discovery call today at atlaspropertygroup.com.au. This is a Momentum Media production. Welcome to the Smart Property Investment Show, the podcast by investors for investors. Well, good day, Phil Tarrant, host of the Smart Property Investment Show. Hope you're well. Here we are into 2022. Lots going on. Christmas now behind us. And uh, I remember thinking when I was drinking a small glass of eggnog there on uh, Christmas Eve, how quick 2021 went. And uh, I wonder if 2022 is going to be the same, no doubt it will be, particularly in this game that is property, whether or not 2022 is going to be anything like 2021, whether or not we're ever going to see a 2021 again uh, in terms of those dynamics, who knows? I think what you will see over 2022 is continued growth, albeit at a very uh, reduced rate compared to the growth that we all experienced over 2021. Now, there is indications and people are telegraphing uh, potential decrease in property prices over 2023. That's what a lot of the economic or bank forecasters are calling right now. We'll watch that. We'll keep that narrative over the period of time and look for what those triggers may be that will influence that as Australia emerges out of the COVID pandemic, that second lockdown at the back end of 2021. Uh, The economy is looking pretty reasonable. We've got an election coming up this year, we know, and uh, how that's going to play out, who knows? Um, It's going to be a tough one to call and I'm not really in the business of doing that. However, the economy is looking all right. Uh, unemployment remains low, and I, th- I think it's still going to continue to drop. So if you're an Aussie and you want a job, guess what? You can get yourself a job. It's the reason why it's called a lucky country. But as we open up our borders and we allow more skilled migrants coming in, that's going to be a great enabler for supporting long-term economic growth. We all know that the construction, the property sector, however wide or big that is, um, is Significant in Australia, I think one in eight Australians are somehow connected, working Australians are somehow connected uh, with property. And that sort of ranges from your your tradies to your commercial construction type people, all the way through the residential property and the apparatus or infrastructure around that. So it's great to be in property. It's a great privilege of mine to be able to navigate this sector, speaking with people all over the joint. One of them is someone who comes on to the podcast regularly with me. Uh, He's a good friend of the Smart Property Investment Show. He's from Atlas Property Group. He's the Director there, Lachlan Vidler, joins me in the studio to chat through this year, how to achieve your New Year's property goals in 2022. Lachlan, how are you going? Good, Phil. How are you going? I'm all right, mate. Uh, Good to be back at work uh, after the holiday season. It was nice to uh, reflect and recharge and start thinking about what 2022 means. And no doubt you're on the same pathway yourself. It's a good time to stop and and a bit of a circuit breaker and, and start framing sort of perception, opinions, and also philosophy towards what the year ahead of us takes. No doubt your phone's already lighting up with people sort of have gone through that uh, journey over the uh, the holiday period thinking, this is the year, it's time, it's time to do something. How's that going? Well, it's busy. Like you said, the phone's already lighting up. I'll tell you what, it was nice to uh, be able to sit down and have a bit of a break. I think, uh, you know, real estate was a big year last year for everyone and um you know the good times don't last forever but it was certainly a big year so i think i know personally i'm feeling recharged and ready to go and get some cracking deals going this year yeah that's the idea and we'll sort of get into um sort of five key points that i want to pick your brain on around how to achieve those uh, goals now we are into the new year of 2022 but um some, some info here, and, and I like to think that um, we've got our finger on the pulse here at uh, Momentum Media, and we've got the, the long arm Momentum Media, and in particular Smart Property Investment. We know property, we know it pretty well, and we're pretty well connected. And, and my people tell me there's some uh, interesting news here uh, for your business, Atlas, uh, and you personally, finalist for Buyer's Agent of the Year this year and finalist for the Rising Star of the Year. That's at the Real Estate Business Awards, which is the big awards program, universal awards program for the real estate sector in Australia. Mate, you must be pretty chuffed with that. That that sort of is all announced in March by memory. Yeah, oh, I am so excited. Obviously, it's 
been a lot of hard work and, and had a lot of great support from the team and clients, but um, so excited. And uh, yeah, last time I checked, I think it's March as well. So uh, only a few weeks to go, you know, couple, maybe a couple of months really, but uh, yeah, I am, I'm really excited. And I think that um, it's a great field this year and it's great to see so many people just doing great things in real estate and um you know, competition and and overall, I think it just means that clients and consumers just get a better result overall. So mate, compared to the field, I've seen some of the names coming in and uh, it's a who's who of uh, the buyer's agent sector. And, and you know what? I've got a lot of satisfaction watching the growth or the emergence of buyer's agents in Australia over the last decade. I've used a buyer's agent for the majority of my purchases and um, it's grown in leaps and bounds. And I think it's going to be a super interesting place to watch moving forward. My views, uh, opinions is, is that we're going to see a huge surge in the number of Australians who are looking for a professional advocate to act on their behalf in buying properties and whether or not we'll end up like we are in America where you have a professional that sits on both sides of the transaction here in Australia. I'm sort of telegraphing that you're going to see a lot more of it, whether it's ever going to be 100% of all, all purchases, I doubt it, but I think you're going to see a lot more of it moving forward. And here at Smart Property Investment, we'll continue to put backs behind it because all we want now goal our objectives are to make sure that we've got more informed property investors that said there's other people with very similar intent in supporting uh, the growth of the sector and also transparency in property and property investing both buying and selling and constructions and developing the whole sort of interconnected ecosystem and uh, news here that you've joined the board of the property investment professionals of australia pippa that's pretty good i used to sit on that board back in the day yeah, oh, did you? I didn't know that. Yeah, I did up until about five years ago, and and I worked out that I probably wasn't contributing as as much as other people could do. So uh, I left that board. However, I'm still a huge supporter of Pippa. I think it does great work in, in ensuring transparency as much as possible in real estate. We need bodies like this to keep driving it forward. So uh, that's pretty cool that you're on the board of Pippa. Yeah, I mean, you know me, and I think I've come on here a million and one times and spoken about how much I value the sector and I like to see the sector always looking to improve itself and things like that. And and for me, it's all good. Talk is cheap, right? So yeah. being able to go off and, you know, jump on the board and, and be able to help and assist and, and be part of that, um, you know, the industry and growing it, I thought, well, put my money where my mouth is and do it. There you go. Get involved. Um, fight the good fight. And this is what... I still, sometimes my mind boggles when I hear some of the stories of people investing in property, just some of the decisions that people are still making when they're so avoidable. Just even listen to to podcasts like this or some of the other great property podcasts out there. A lot of the mistakes that people have made over the years are largely avoidable. However, more and more Australians are still making those same mistakes by making ill-informed decisions around investing in property. Investing in property is not hard, Lachlan. It's largely simple. You buy well and you hold on to your property. Uh, it's just a lot of uh, misinformed people, but then also people who are ill-informed by those people who think they're operating or acting on their behalf when they're really operating on someone else's behalf are buying the wrong properties. And I know Pippa is big focus on that, trying to um, support greater transparency in property and property investment and putting shining a light on some of the, uh, what do you call them, property sharks, property spruikers that are still operating out there. Oh, absolutely. And it's one of those things, you know, you, there's always bad people in every industry. And to me, it's just so important seeing an organization like Pippa or any of the other ones that are out there. I mean, there are a few. Be part of the solution, right? That's what Pippa does. That's what some of these other people do. And whenever, you know, nobody's, people make mistakes, you know, there's professionals who make mistakes. But on the whole, I think it's great to see that the industry is continuing to professionalize, continuing to make itself better. And ultimately, it's everyday people that benefit. And just with property investment, you need to be quite mature about it. It is an industry, it is a sector. Um, so I know a big thing for people is just trying to promote greater transparency inside a property. And that said, that there is businesses that have relationships inside of property investment. You know, a mortgage broker may or accountant may refer you to a mortgage broker or an accountant may refer you to a potential builder. And there's different structures in that and how those referral relationships come about. However, the key thing and what Pippa will tell you, and it's part of its mantra, is that they're okay, those referral relationships. If anything, they're, they're more than okay. They're good because it helps uh, investors along. However, if there is some sort of financial component with that uh, referral, you just got to be disclosed. That's all. So that the consumer knows that there is some sort of um, uh, referral component of any relationship. If it's disclosed, you know, and then you can make informed decision about it. And that's a key point, isn't it, Lachlan? Oh, absolutely. And I think you're right. Like, 
at the end of the day, me as a, as a buyer's agent or somebody as a solicitor or whatever it is, when you refer somebody to another business, you're effectively staking your own reputation on that business. Mm-hmm. So nine times out of 10, people, you know, they're not doing anything wrong. They're not trying to be malicious. They're actually trying to help. But you're right. It's just about disclosure and it's just about making sure people are open and transparent because it might change the way that you think about things. You know, there's a lot of people, I have a lot of clients who have come to me and they've said they've used a professional before. They've always had that little uh, like voice in the back of their head that's told them something maybe wasn't quite right. And it wasn't necessarily that that professional was doing the wrong thing, but they always had a feeling that they might be better to go in a different direction. They found out after the fact that uh, there was might maybe some commission involved that they weren't told about, and it just validated that, that voice that they did have. And if they had have known, maybe they would have stopped and gone, "Look, I see you're trying to do the right thing, but your service probably isn't for me." And then they've got they would have gone to see somebody else. And I think that's the most important part. It's just about openness and disclosure. Openness, disclosure, transparency, and as a property investor, just ask the question, and yeah. they should tell you. And any paperwork you sign in relation to that, so with, with any good operator inside a property will ensure that in it's disclosed and it's absolutely disclosed. I guess one of the key things I've seen it in Pippa beforehand, I don't want this to be a Pippa podcast, but the Pippa does some good work, is um, there is disclosure, but people operating in property are double dipping, as in they're getting paid, <laughs> they're getting they're getting paid to as a service for the property investor. However, they're getting some sort of referral on the other side. So they're getting paid on both sides and, and that's an absolute no-no. It's got to be completely disclosed, uh, that sort of stuff. And and you see some people, a lot of people have found themselves uh, in misfavour with investors, but also in the eyes of ASICs and ASIC and the regulatory bodies, uh, they find themselves in trouble. So anyway, make sure whoever you're using as a property investor, you know what they're doing, completely disclosed and transparent. They're acting and operating on your behalf. But Lachlan, I want to get into how to achieve your New Year's property goals in 2022. And this is what a lot of people have been thinking about over the last month or so over the festive season. We'll get into it. Just go to break beforehand. Stay with us. Back in a moment. Looking for a blue chip Gold Coast investment property or trying to relocate to the beautiful sunny Gold Coast but keep missing out on the right properties? Maybe you need an expert on the ground to source the right property for you. The Srama Group are the leading recommended buyers agency specific to the Gold Coast, providing their clients with exclusive off-market property opportunities, specific insights into market, combined with a large network of dedicated professionals to ensure sure you make the right decision without the hassle. Get in touch with us at thesramagroup.com.au and secure your financial freedom today. Welcome back, everyone. It's Phil Tarrant, host of the Smart Property Investment Show. I'm with Lachlan Vidler from Atlas Property Group. And hey, just thinking back to 2021 and milestones for you, Lachlan, your business has, has accelerated over that period of time. So, so no doubt you're doing something right, but you launched a book, didn't you? Are we going to get a is it going to be an updated 2022 version this year or is it pretty much going to stand the test of time? Or are you done with books? Oh, I'll tell you what, uh, my partner who also co-wrote it with me, uh, she'd probably have my head if I suggested a revision of that book. It was, yeah. uh, it was. I mean, writing a book at any time is obviously a big job and um, we certainly worked out. We have different work styles and different ways that we uh, think about things. So it was um, it was great to do it, but um, maybe watch this space about whether we do a revision or not. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> you heard it first. Uh, maybe not for this year, but uh, it's called The Military Guide to Property Investing. Um, which I was fortunate to get a book from you. We did a podcast on as well. You can still get the book? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you yeah. can go on Amazon, um, all the other big book depository, you can go on all the big online sites, but it's also in store. So you can walk into a Dimex and pick it up. So uh, it's certainly been a, a really great thing, a great publisher, and it's been a, it's been a really awesome journey. And, yeah. Um, yeah. All right. We'll go and check it out, uh, Military Guide. Uh, it's a problem. And that obviously lends itself to, uh, Lachlan and his partner's background um, out of the Australian Defence Force and the great work that our people in uniform continue to do for Australia. How to achieve your New Year's property goals in 2022, Lachlan, number one. And this is a key thing, and no doubt a lot of people thought about this over the holiday period. It's all about goal setting. This is critical. If you don't have a goal, you're not going to be able to create a plan. Absolutely. And this was when I realised oh, that we were going to have a chat on this side of the year and uh uh, I was thinking, what can we talk about? And it was me. I was sitting back going, what, did, what have I done over this Christmas break? And I realized, oh, I set some goals. And I thought, okay, I'm sure other people did. So let's have a chat about it. And you're right, goal setting. It's the most important thing. How many of us sat around midnight 
maybe a glass of champagne in hand and thought, I want 2022 to be my year for X, Y, and Z, whatever it might have been. And it's a great start and it's got to be a start point. I mean, you don't know where, you, how do you know that you're going down the right path if you don't know what the goal is? And that's why I think about it. So goal setting is absolutely one of the most important parts. And one of my fun facts for today is less than 8% of people stick to their New Year's resolution or New Year's goal. So it's so important that when you make your goal uh, and to for anybody that might have, you know, studied at uni or, you know, done some training about goal setting, everyone knows that you set smart goals. So specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. So smart. And it's so important that you make sure your goals are smart because it's been found that smart goals are the best ways to make them and then achieve them. Yeah, it's a good uh, framework around goal setting, smart goals. Uh, sort of a business discipline, but it certainly translates into your personal life. And uh, just go on Google smart goals and, and you'll get a, a good understanding about it all. And, and also around goal setting, how the process of goal setting works. A lot of people will, and I can't remember the exact adage, but they'll overestimate what they can achieve in a month and underestimate what they'll achieve uh, in a year. And this is lends itself to the compounding nature of goal setting. If you just uh, keep cracking the small goals, guess what happened? The big goals uh you know, uh, eventuate, but only by knowing what you want to achieve can you start working out how you go about doing that. And that's the planning bit. But a lot of people get that a bit, whether it's the right term, ask about face, where they think planning helps them goal set. And you probably want to recalibrate it. And goal setting is really just going, you know, what would I like? You know, what would be the eventual outcome I would like if whatever happens, happens. And it gives you something to aim towards. If you don't know what you're aiming towards, it's really hard to create a plan to get there. What's worked with you, uh, Lachlan, and this probably lends itself to to your military disciplines. Um, you know, this is what happens every single day and any given time when you're trying to achieve an objective, an objective being what is the goal, only then you can start planning towards it. But what's the secret for you with, with objective planning or goal setting? Is it just knowing what you want? Or if you don't know what you want, how do you work out what you want? You know what? That's a really good and almost philosophical question, Phil. Mm. <laughs> it's um, Well, you are a soldier scholar, right? <laughs> something like that. Mm. Um, it, it, yeah, that is a great question. I think for me, the way that I always try to think about it is, I mean, firstly, I always share my goals with somebody else because I find that as soon as you're accountable to someone or something else, you're already going to be more likely to do it. So whether it's with you know, my partner or whether it's with a friend, obviously you keep it relatable. Like I'm not going to go and tell a stranger off the street about how much money I'd like to save in a year or something like that. But, you know, sharing them with people because then they can also check you on what you've said. And I mean, if we go back to that smart framework, if you're not maybe uh, going by that or any of the other ones, like you said, Google goal setting and you can find a million and one different ways to do it. If you've got somebody who can also check that, then they can go, well, hang on, maybe you haven't quite done this right. Like if we talk about it in a property context, something that I see all the time is, a client will come to me and they'll go, I want to build a property portfolio as their goal. And I go, okay, well, that's great. And we all want to do that. But what does that mean? Because taking the S, it's not very specific. So maybe this, the being specific is I want to buy one property in 2022. And then we move on to the M and we go, all right, well, is that measurable? Well, yeah, it is one. So when I buy one, that's the measure and I've done it. Is it achievable? Okay, well, I don't have a job. Maybe that's not achievable or I earn this amount of money and I've got X amount saved and that does seem achievable. So we've done it. Is it realistic? Well, yeah, I think it is. You know, we're not saying we want to build the whole portfolio today. We want to build by one. So it's realistic. And is it time bound? Yeah, I want to do it this year. So that's a really easy example for people out there. And I find I do the same with my own goals. Make sure I go through each of those steps to check that I'm not just saying things and, you know, I'm not one of those people that's um, do as I say, not as I do. I'm making sure that I'm actually living exactly what I say to clients and friends and family. Yeah, so a goal like I want to be a property millionaire, maybe that'd be an outcome if you get your goals right, but <laughs> whether or not it's the right beacon to be uh, following. And you know what? It's okay also, and you don't need to beat yourself up around goal setting. You, you don't need to, it doesn't need to be war and peace, this sort of stuff. You know, it's got to be the realistic part about goal setting is is actually having the mechanism to work out what you want. And if you don't necessarily know exactly what you want, but, you know, what you want might be happiness, what you want might be something else, right? Like 
go through the journey. And if it doesn't happen today, if you sit down with a bit of paper saying, I want to work out my goals and it doesn't happen, don't worry about it. It'll sort itself out eventually. So don't yeah. beat yourself up around it. However, make sure you apply some structure or architecture to it so you can actually, through that process, have something which is smart. And then also the key about goal setting is that it's all right if it changes, you know, and you probably want to keep reflecting on that as well. But no doubt that's sort of towards the back end of a process like this. So let's just say, Lachlan, you've got your goal and let's use your example. I want to buy one property, one investment property in 2022. Okay. That's something you can work towards then. And how do you go about doing that? And this comes to your point. The second point around uh, sort of the five points on how to achieve your property, New Year's property goals you can start making a plan. How do you make a plan? Is the plan is I want one investment property? There's so many clues out there on how to do that, right? Oh, absolutely. And uh, like you said, it doesn't have to be war and peace. It's pretty straightforward, right? If you're going to buy a property, there's certain things that you need to do. You need to have some money saved to pay a deposit and pay a cost. Or, and for a lot of people, particularly after the year that we've just had, maybe they have equity in their home. So it's not necessarily saving a lot of people, you'd be surprised, particularly, you know, you listeners in Sydney and uh, and Brisbane, as Brisbane continues, it's really nice streak after all these years. Odds are on that you've probably got a lot of equity in your home and that could be a really great way to use it. But um, but going back to what you were, you were asking, you know, it is simple. So you need some money to be able to buy. You need to be able to get a loan. You need to be able to, you know, do your contracts for the property and things like that. So you just need to start mapping out those steps. And if you don't know it, obviously, uh, you may want to chat to a professional at that point, you know, somebody like me or another buyer's agent or an accountant. There's plenty of people you can chat to. But make a plan and keep it simple. It's KISS, right? Keep it simple, stupid. I love that principle. And it's exactly like that. I think the other part that people sometimes overlook is maybe your plan needs to be if it's if it's you want to buy a property in 2022, maybe you need to make your plan a little bit simpler first. Maybe it's I need to save ten thousand dollars more than what I have. Start small, and because like you said, they compound over time. It might be one month that's you know it will save a few thousand here or a few hundred. Maybe the next month is will reduce a bit of debt. Just make some sort of plan around your goal because. If you aim for the, what's the saying? If you aim for the moon and you miss, you'll land in the stars, right? Much better to do that than just sit back and you don't do anything and then suddenly 2023 comes along and you're in the same spot. Well, yeah, and, and this is people overthink their goal setting or they that that is the, the primary function. It's good to set your goals, but you've got to move into, you know, tactical action of that and your plan should help you do that. And a good plan should really give you the narrative, it should give you the structure, it should give you the story, it should give you the checklist to actually go about doing what you need to do. And if you want to buy one property this year, your first investment property or another investment property, you don't need to reinvent the wheel on this stuff. Um, there is, to your point, there's people out there, Locker, that can help you do this sort of stuff, but spell it out. It's sequential. But guess what? If your plan is to buy another or your first investment property, the key bit of it is going to be making sure you've either got heaps of cash and you can pay in cash or if you don't have that, which is most people, you're going to need a home loan. And that's a really good place to start if you're going down that pathway. And we'll get into that. We'll just go to another break. Uh, Lachlan, I want to finish these uh, these key points up because these are a real framework for people to get cracking. Now we're in 2022, back in a moment. The mark of financial success isn't about getting bigger, better, faster or more. To Paul, success is freedom. Freedom to spend more time with his family or giving back to his community or just more time to go surfing. Paul Glossop, an award-winning property buyer and regular guest on the Smart Property Investment Podcast, has taken the lessons he's learned building a multi-million dollar property portfolio and laid them out in his best-selling book, A Surfer's Guide to Property Investing. For a limited time, get your free copy of Paul's award-winning book and receive a roadmap for building both lifestyle and wealth through property investing. Grab your free copy today at purepropertyinvestment.com. Welcome back, everyone. It's Phil Tarrant here with uh, Lachlan Bidler from Atlas Property Group. We're chatting through goal setting, planning, achieving your New Year's property goals in 2022. Now, Lachlan, we've sort of spoken about goal setting and planning, key parts of it. But once you've got that done, good to, to go back to it, but you've got to get into the business of getting the job done now, getting your mortgages sorted out. And we've spoken a lot about this uh, beforehand. There's an absolute given before you even start thinking about where, what, when, where, how, 
you're going to buy a property, get yourself a pre-approval. Pre-approval is a rubber stamp from the bank that they are happy to lend you money uh, on a formal basis. And typically what that means is that you need to go through the full application process. And I'll give you an approval in principle that says, yes, Mr. Tarrant, we're happy to lend you money and this much of it. So you got a budget, 500 grand, 400 grand, 300 grand, whatever that number is. And then you can actually start going down a pathway of looking to deploy that capital. So We'll chat about mortgages at a different time, uh, Lachlan, but your point three is start your research and engage help. So you know how much money you've got to spend. This is when you can start getting tactical about the type of asset you buy. Absolutely. And the one thing I want to say before I talk about this, back on the planning, I've got a little stat here for you. Mm. And the reason I want to say this because I think it's so important. They've done a lot of studies on plans and goal setting and things like that. And all these very smart, you know, PhD people and researchers and professors they estimate that you are upwards of 40% more likely to achieve your plan or your goals if you just write it down, 40%. So no matter what your goal is, if it's buy one property, whether it's buy 10, whatever it is, take the five seconds and write it down, keep that bit of paper on your fridge or something like that, and you are up to 40% more likely to achieve it just by doing that for a five-second job. There you go. There's a tip. Put it on a post-it yeah. note, stick it on your computer so you look at it every day. Uh, yeah. So, so this point then, Lachlan, about starting your research and engaging help. Um, yeah. This is what property, where, when, how, what colour is it, how much it costs, all that sort of stuff, right? Yeah. And I guess out of the five things that we're, we're obviously chatting through right now, this is probably, in my opinion, the most difficult part to do for obvious reasons. It's like you said, there's everything out there. It's, you know, where do you buy? What do you buy? How do you buy? What should you be looking for? What shouldn't you be looking for? This is where it gets complicated. And what I'd say to people is if you bought property before and you've got your method, well, this is the time that you go back to it. Whatever steps you go through, through your research, your analysis, this is where you start going through it again. If you don't have that sort of background or experience, go out and start educating yourself. Buy a book jump onto a forum, go on the Smart Property Investment website and download a suburb report. There are a million and one things you need to do, but this is where you've got to start educating yourself so you can understand what you think is important about an area and then obviously going and implementing that. You know, Are you looking at listing volume? Are you looking at days on market? Are you looking at number of properties listed in that area? Are you looking at vendor discounting? There's a, there's a million and one different things that you can look at and you've got to learn about them. I can't sit here and, and tell you what's going to be important. I've got my methodology. You've probably got yours, Phil. I know other people have theirs. And it's everybody's got to learn their own. Or this is also the time that maybe you might also look at getting some of that help. For a lot of people, maybe you work a lot of hours, maybe you've got a big family that you love spending time with, maybe you just don't care, right? Maybe this is the time that if you can't go through and do all that, that's when you might need a bit of that help to get people who do know how to do that and do it frequently to come in and assist you. And I've always been a huge advocate of leveraging other skills of professionals. We spoke about beforehand, and I think um, as a property investor, you should be leaning on that, you know, but it's good to go into it with some sense of actually knowing a lot of the terms and the issues and stuff. And that's the reason why we do smart property investment. Um, but for those new investors or those just starting out, we've done a lot of hard work to give you shortcuts doing that. One of them actually is up online right now. You can check it out, smartpropertyinvestment.com.au. Uh, it's a sort of big buyer's guide to getting started on your property investing journey. We've done this with our friends over at Blue Sun Home Loans. Um, go and have a look at it. Uh, it's a big toolkit. You can check it out, get you underway to fast track your finance and get started with your first purchase uh, with one of Australia's leading non-bank lenders. You can go to smartpropertyinvestment.com.au and we're sort of taking a chat about some of those themes uh, right now. So go and get educated on it. No doubt, Lockin, you would rather chat with a property investor who sort of is familiar with a lot of these terms, understands a lot of the concepts, uh, has already done that pathway of goal setting and making their own plans as a a prelim factor to engaging someone like yourself and making sure you can do the best work you can do. Yeah, oh, well, it, it can certainly make my job easier. I mean, I will say, though, that for a lot of people, they genuinely don't know. It's that classic adage of you don't know what you don't know. And mm-hmm. the amount of times I have a conversation with people and they go, I know that this is the path I need to take, but I don't know how to do it. You know, they've never worked in real estate. They've never, maybe they've never bought a property, even their own home. They've got no experience. So it's challenging for them to make a plan. Mm. And I get a lot of I get a lot of um, enjoyment and personal satisfaction by helping those people because you get to see the difference you can make in their lives when they go from no knowledge, no foundation or investment foundation all the way through to 
you know, maybe a big portfolio behind them and a lot of education. But I think it's like a lot of things. Plenty of people start out, they do their own tax. Eventually, it either gets too complicated, they don't have enough time, they don't care, whatever it might be, and then they go and get an accountant. I see this as very, a very similar thing that for a lot of the time, you might be doing it yourself, but eventually, for a lot of people, you then start to outsource it. Yeah, your time is better spent elsewhere. But this comes to the point, and it's your fourth point here about I'm pulling the trigger. You got to get started at some point. You can't over analyze. You can't procrastinate or continue to procrastinate. So many investors out there that never do anything. So, how do you actually execute and do it well? The, the big part of that is you got to have a lot of trust, either in yourself or the professional you're working with. And by that trust, I mean when you've either found a property and you've run your numbers, you've got to trust your own methodology. You've got to trust that what you've done through all your own education, all your own learning, and if it stacks up, that that's all it is, right? It stacks up and you pull that trigger. Or if you're working with a professional, you obviously trust them because you wouldn't have given them, you know, your money to play with. Uh, if you didn't, but when they present something to you, if it stacks up, if it seems logical, if the I's are dotted and the and the T's are crossed and the numbers all add up to whatever they need to add up to, you've got to trust them as well. And it's the hardest part because that's the point where everybody's being asked to take that leap off a cliff, put their money where their mouth is and spend hundreds of thousands, if in the case of some people, millions on buying a property where the the outcome is not guaranteed. But that's where it comes back to that analysis. You trust it, you believe in it, and you've done everything you can to make a logical you know, outcome or, or, or deduction or conclusion that it's going to be right for your circumstances. Yeah, and it's absolutely important. You've just got to do. And you know what? Well, you're not always going to get it right when you're doing, but um, if you have the right structure in place and right planning in place, uh, largely with the right people in place, largely executing should be reasonably seamless. But what I know and, and seeing the best investors, uh, and this is to your point, it's um, realigning your plans with your goals. And and what you're talking about there essentially is the debrief and, you know, um, your military uh, learnings, uh, no doubt that was instilled in, in the people like yourself very earlier on in your officer training is the power of debriefing. And I think it's often overlooked. You've got to really think about is what we're doing right? How's it going? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it indifferent? You can do that individually or you can do it collectively. And, and if you look at the power of debriefing and just taking a, a military concept or, or example from it, there was a squadron in um, in Vietnam, uh, Lachlan, you probably heard this story, um, who was getting a, a shoot down rate of one to six versus um, every other squadron in the US Air Force, which was largely sort of one to two or even closer. And they went, why is this squadron performing so differently? Why are they so exceptional compared to everyone else? And how can we actually benchmark that? And they sent all the smart people in there to try and work out what they were doing differently, whether they were using different ammunition or different tactics or different whatever, different people, different training. And all they worked out was that the biggest difference between this squadron and all the other squadrons was that this squadron debriefed after every single mission. They sat down in a structured format and went, how do we go? What do we do? How is it different? What can we do better? And from that, the perpetual learnings from it was key, and that was instilled into a lot of US fighter uh, operations. And the good thing about it, and you see, you probably, you know, and everyone would have seen the Blue Angels, right, which is the um, uh, it's the Marines um, display unit. They still do it after every single display that they do. However, they have a mantra of nameless and rankless. So it doesn't matter who you are, your role in uh, the squadron, your position, your rank or whatever it is. You talk about the issues without any bias or agenda connected with the individual. And they said that's hugely transformative. And the same thing applies, you know, in, in, in property investment. Absolutely. I mean, I look out to the guys who work for me in Atlas and I say to them all the time, you know, tell me if you see something, right? If there's something we can do better, talk to me about it. Let's make it better, you know, make it better for our clients, make it better for us, make the work day better, things like that. I think it's so important. And I think bring it back to the sort of, you, you know, the how to achieve your property goals and and realigning your plan and that debrief i think it's so important for all those reasons that you said you you get to learn from your own mistakes and it could be as simple as oh we didn't get a pre-approval it became really complicated to get our mortgage on the other side point for next time let's get a pre-approval or any of a million and one other things and it means that you set yourself up for success better for the next one maybe it's less stress maybe it's you get more dollars off the price maybe it's you get a better asset there could be so many different ways to do it 
But then it's taking that debrief, taking that experience that you've just got out of, out of the property you bought and then translating it back to what your, your overall goal is or was and the plan to achieve it. Because if you've got a goal, and I mean, really, this has been about short-term goal setting just for this mm. year, but I'd encourage everybody to have long-term goals. So the short-term goal for this year is buy one, but the long-term goal might be buy five over the next five years. You then take everything you've done and you relate it back to that because then you can go, all right, are we on track? Are we not? If we are, look, great, let's keep going. And if we're not on track, why? And it probably comes back to that debrief. And then let's realign so that we can get back onto the path we need to. And you'll be setting yourself up for success. And mm. no one can do that but you. It's got to be up to you. And I can help. Accountants can help. The Smart Property Investment Show can help. And, and we can all do our best to provide you guidance and, and assistance. But at the end of the day, you've got to want it as well. And they're the people who always achieve success or the most success are the ones who want it. Yeah, you do. And, and out of all, all these five points are absolutely critical. Uh, Lachlan, one, goal setting, two, make a plan, three, start your research or engage help, four, pull the trigger, and then five, realign your plan and your goals. I would say if I was going to lean on any of these in terms of uh, what is the most important, I would say probably the debrief is is probably absolutely critical because that's how you go from one property to two properties to five properties to 10 properties. It's the learnings along the way and have the maturity without bias or agenda to reflect on your own performance through that or those of the partners that you operate with and learn. Like it's a learning experience, learn from your space, learn importantly from your successes and wins. Look to capture that knowledge and and apply it and deploy it as effectively as you possibly can. So if you're not debriefing and you want one tip for 2022 on how to be a property, better property investor, get in the art of debriefing. Do it yourself and do it with the people that you're working with. You do that, you're probably going to do well, right, Lachlan? 100%. 100%. It's like I said before, it's up to you. Like nobody's going to come and force you to do it. How good do you want to be? Do you want to be in the, I mean, we've all seen that ABS statistics and, you know, everybody knows how hard it is to get to the third property, especially, but to get to that big portfolio, nobody's going to want it more than you. I mean, maybe your partner does or your spouse, but other than that, nobody else is going to force you to do it. So it's all about, it's the little things. I think it's, it's, um, it's about the, uh, oh, I can't think what it's called, the aggregation of marginal gains. If you improve 1% every day, uh, I think you end up being 36 times better at the end of a year. And that was done by the British Olympic team and it's what took them from uh, winning, I think, no medals in one of the Olympic Games in the early 2000s to winning something like 50 medals over a 12-month period once they really implemented it. And it's the same for property investing. It's You've got to do it. Yeah, we heard it here first, uh, Lachlan Vidler. Mate, I do enjoy uh, catching up. It's great to see you as we kick off 2022. Uh, Lachlan's from Atlas Property Group. Well, hey, if anyone wants to have a chat with you, mate, what do they do? Uh, jump on our website, uh, atlaspropertygroup.com.au. You can book in for a chat, totally obligation-free, and we'll sit down and we'll just yeah, we'll have a conversation exactly like you and I are doing, Phil, or, you know, we, like you said, we've got our book out in stores, so if you want to get a bit of an insight into the way that uh, I think, you might want to pick that up or mm. – Social media, I mean, there's a few different ways, but more than anything else, if you're thinking about getting into property or you're in it and you want a bit of guidance or, or a different perspective, just get in touch and we'll have a chat for 20 minutes and that's all there is. I mean, it's up to you if we if we work together or not. Cool. Well, fortunate that uh, you've got uh, people out there who uh, you can leverage as part of your wealth creation journey. Smart Point Investment is one of them. Go and listen to all the podcasts we've done. Plenty of Lachlan as well um, back in 2021. You can go and tune into them. Uh, we even go into to his sort of origin story as a property investor as well. More to come. Uh, we'll get Lachlan back on the show this year. Uh, pick his brain and what's happening. And best of luck, mate, if I don't uh, talk to you beforehand uh, for finalist buyer's agent of the year and rising star of the year of the REB Awards, Universal Awards for Property Investment in Australia. I'll probably see you on the night anyway, mate. Um, and, uh, yeah, it'd be good to catch up. Yeah, thanks, mate. It's going to be a great night. It's, uh, I mean, one of the – was it in person last year? Uh, yes, it was. It was okay. Yeah, I think yeah. I think this year though, everybody will just be itching after what a big year it was last year and all the you know the complications of everything COVID. I think it's going to yeah. be a great night for the it industry. Get stuck into it. It sounds good. Uh, Lock and Whittler, Atlas Property Group. Hope you enjoyed that, everyone. Remember, smartpropertyinvestment.com. dot I don't know if Lachlan's done that yet. Have you done a review on the Smart Property Investment Show on the Apple Podcast? Probably I not. No, I haven't. Please. And you ask me every time. I every do. Time. I do. And uh, this is—it's uh, just you know—it's 
a lot of people here who uh, who do the heavy lifting, mate, and they would appreciate your feedback. And for all of you who are tuning in, that's a real favour for me if you can do that. Uh, that'll be great. If you want to come and have a chat with us on the show, editor at smartpropertyinvestment.com.au, email that email and uh, the team will get back to you. Come and have a yarn about your property investing journey. Uh, Smart Property HQ uh, is where you need to be. Remember, if you just kick it off and you're just listening to this and going, I'm a bit confused and I don't really know where to start. Uh, there's that great new resource that we have on smartpropertyinvestment.com.au, powered by our partner, our friends over at Bluestone Home Loans, um, how to get started investing in property and some of the key stuff around it. Uh, We'll see you again next time. Until then, bye-bye. The information featured in this podcast is general in nature and does not take into consideration your financial situation or individual needs and should not be relied upon. Before making any investment, insurance, tax, property or financial planning decision, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you. Guests appearing on this podcast may have a commercial relationship with the companies mentioned. Looking to secure finance to maximize your returns on your investment property? Finney can help. With access to over 70 lenders, Finney can find the right finance for your unique situation. So whether you're ready to refinance for a better rate, improve your cash flow, release equity to grow your portfolio, or are looking to find the right finance for your next purchase, we're here to help. Visit finney.com.au today to learn more.